I sold $80,000 worth of used books my first year on Amazon with no experience and I was dead broke. In this video, I'm going to give you a complete tutorial of how I find and sell books on Amazon simply by driving to thrift stores and libraries in my local area. My second year on Amazon, I did $350,000 and if 22 year old me could do it, so can you. I'm going to walk you through how I quickly scan the books with my phone to determine whether or not they are profitable to send to Amazon. One of the best parts about this business model is you can ship all the books to Amazon so you don't need to worry about storing the books in your house. So in this video, obviously I'm taking you into a thrift store and showing you my strategy, but if you guys stay until the end, I'll show you a more in detail view of how I use my phone and that app that I'm showing you on the phone, I'll show you a more detailed view of how I really determine whether or not a book is not profitable or whether or not you should purchase it and send it to Amazon. So if you guys are a little bit confused in this video about you know how I'm determining if the books are profitable or not, I'm gonna slow it down at the very end. And I'm also gonna share with you guys a bunch of different places outside of thrift stores because thrift stores are just one place you can find books. I'll show you a bunch of different places that I found thousands of dollars in profit. So make sure to stay until the end. And without further ado, let's get back to the video. So I'll go over here. You wanna get a brief overview of what we're dealing with. And you wanna stick with the nonfiction sections. So there was some nonfiction back there. These children's sections right here, you can pull some profit. Uh, you're gonna pull more profit from these hardcover books here. And a lot of resellers don't target the children's section, but we'll come back to this later. Okay. If you guys are approved to sell DVDs, DVDs are usually pretty good to tackle. Again, we want to target the nonfiction first, so let's go back to that section. Hey, you the Romer the Romer? Yeah, Romer the Romer, oh, baby. What's up, man? <laughs> All right. So, what you want to do, this is how I do it. I put my phone on the ground, and I'll have headphones in, so I'll have headphones to give me the trigger noises, and then I'm going to start going to town. All right. <sighs> Yeah, so what you want to look for is, do you know that for sure? I'm like 70% sure. I'm here with Rake and Profit, and, and uh, a lot of thrift stores are going to have different color stickers. So you see here the different colors. They actually have the date on them too. So let's look at one of these. Do you see a date on that? I don't see a date. I don't know, but there, there's going to be a newest color. Most of the time, the new colors are going to be, or the newest stock books are going to be on the edge. So one side or the other, the person who stocks the books, they generally push everything over and then they put more books down. So they'll fill up these gaps. So just know most of the new books are going to be here. It's orange. Orange. Is there any half off? Not today. Okay. So different colors mean different things. Sometimes there's a half off day. Um, but in this case, orange is the newest color. So if you're not getting many hits with oranges, um, it might be a super overpicked place. So I'm gonna turn my volume up on here. I'm gonna be a little bit obnoxious, but you catch that? Okay, I'll put this up here. <laughs> okay, um, I, this is not the best technique for a couple of reasons. Um, one of the reasons why you don't wanna use this technique or why you might uh, stray away from this technique is you'll crack your phone. My phone did a cartwheel on the floor one time. A lot of people have a wristband they put on, but um, I feel like I look like a dork if I do that, so I don't do that. Um, at the end of the day, it's about scanning books fast, so do whatever you want. I like to be able to look at the screen too. So, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go after all of the nonfiction. I'm gonna scan every single nonfiction book there is. Then, as I'm scanning, what I'm looking for are books without barcodes. So the barcode books are the easy ones. And these textbooks, this is gonna be a golden section down here. But I'm looking for books without barcodes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a stack of non-barcode books. So I'll start scanning through these. Okay. 
So a lot of these have barcodes. This one right here, a scanner's probably not gonna pick that up. So I'm gonna stack that cover up. And this is similar to the bulk processing technique. A lot of these books are really good condition. Like this is a pristine condition book. So what I, like, what I like to do is as I'm scanning these sections, scan them as fast as possible with the Bluetooth scanner. And then you're gonna stack everything face up. Now, if you're at a thrift store and this sticker right here, this book's actually been sold on Amazon before. You see this F and SKU sticker, but if you see stickers peeled back, that means someone's already scanned it. Now, just because someone's already scanned it doesn't mean it's not profitable. It just means someone someone's already scanned it. So just know when you see this, there's been resellers at the store. If you see lots of stickers covering barcodes that have not been peeled back, you're probably in a gold mine because no other resellers have been there. Something else you want to look for is crooked books. So notice how all these books are crooked down here because I just scanned them. See how they're slightly shifted that way? These books aren't crooked. If they're crooked, they've probably been scanned through by a reseller. Again, it doesn't mean don't scan them. It just means they've been scanned through. So they've, they've probably been picked over. Okay, so nonfiction. And then you could also look for new books in the nonfiction section if you want to play that game. Um, but you want to scan the nonfiction section first, then go, go after the fiction section. We'll go back to the children's section real quick. And now I like to scan these bigger hardcover books. So I'll, I'll go through and I'll scan all these. Sometimes you will find profit in these paper thin books. So, I mean, if you have the time to scan those, go through it. But I think your time's better spent moving to another thrift store or a library rather than that. These books at the bottom, a lot of resellers won't go after those. There's probably some profit in there. So here's a stack of books that some of them are profitable, some of them aren't. I'm gonna walk you through which ones you should purchase and which ones you shouldn't. So first we have here, if you look, $8.78 profit. That's great, that's after all Amazon fees. That's factoring in you paying shipping to Amazon. So we're pretty confident that this is gonna be our profit. And if you look at the e-score, that's 151. That means it's sold at least 151 times over the last 180 days. And we can see the sales rank is 2000, which means it's an extremely fast selling book. So generally with books, a million sales rank sells about 10 to 15 times a year. That's not super fast but like a 10,000 sales rank sells every single day. And so we kind of like judge based off of that, how fast the sales velocity is. A better metric is eScore, because eScore tells you exactly how many times the book had at least one day with the sale. So you don't want to pile up your inventory with a bunch of really slow moving books because you'll just end up paying Amazon storage fees. And it's actually much better to get fast moving books. That way you can turn your inventory, you're not paying storage fees, you're getting your money back, you can invest the money in more inventory. So we really wanna make sure, you know, I'm not gonna tell you guys stay under a million, a lot of booksellers do, but you don't wanna have too many books that are over a million. So if, if it's over a million, make sure the profit is at least $10 or more, in my opinion. This next book here, we have, this is actually my uncle, from the Confederate Army. You can see uh, Jack Hinson was his name. Uh, pretty good selling book, 74,000 rank. And the e-score is 50. So that means it sold at least 50 times over the last six months. $10 profit, 74,000 rank. It's, I mean, pretty quick selling book. I would definitely pick this up for anything less than five bucks. I would pick this up. So now we have this book here, which interest, it's interesting that this is going for $5 profit on Amazon FBA. But if you look here, you can see where it says SBYB, that sell back your book, it's going for $5. So that means this company, sell back your book, is going to buy it for $5 cash and they'll cover shipping to them. So this is not selling on Amazon, you're actually selling to another company. And then that company is gonna sell it on Amazon or eBay or somewhere else. So 
I would definitely pick this book up if it was less than five bucks. And I wouldn't even sell it on Amazon. I would just send it to sell back your book. That way you get instant cash. They always cover shipping. They take X library books. Sell back your books a pretty good service. So this one's three dollars profit, two thousand sales rank. Now notice you can toggle your buy cost if you click on the top right. So I would change this to, let's say we're paying a dollar for it. You're still making two. I would pick this up. It's such a fast selling book. You're going to make the profit. But keep in mind, guys, you don't want to get too many low profit books in your inventory. You run into the same problem. If you have a bunch of slow moving inventory or low profit inventory, I mean, what are you really doing? At the end of the day, Amazon's going to charge you storage fees and it's not going to be worth it. Selling books on Amazon is a great business model, but if you fill it with fill up your inventory with too many slow moving or low profit books, it ends up being more of a liability than a, you know, a, a profitable business. So you want to make sure you're filling your inventory with high profit books that also sell fast. So this is great, but I mean, if I wouldn't load up too many of those low profit books, especially as a beginner starting out. So this one's only 37 cents profit if I paid a dollar for it because my buy cost is still $1. Obviously that's a pass. All right, this is a $3 profit book, 1.4 million sales rank. In the past, maybe a few years ago, I would have sent this in, but the way storage fees are on Amazon right now, I would pass on that. Amazon charges $2, sometimes even more to remove books. If you have a really small book, you might get lucky with a dollar fifty charge. But for these bigger books, they're charging two dollars, three dollars plus. So this is eighty-two cents profit, even though it's got a two hundred and thirteen sales rank, which means this sells probably every single hour, if not every single minute. This is an extremely fast-selling book, but it's just not worth it. You know, paying a dollar to make eighty-two cents. In my opinion, I would definitely leave that on the shelf. This is a dollar thirty-three profit, two point five million sales rank. I would pass on that. Negative one dollar eighty-one cents profit. If I paid it all for this, pass on that. So hopefully you guys get an idea of what books I send to Amazon and which books I choose not to send to Amazon. If you guys want a more in-depth view of how to run a book business and my complete step-by-step -step tutorial, go to starthumble.com. This is my completely free course. I literally out everything. There's no upsell in the course to another paid course. I literally give it all away in this course. There's over 50 videos in there that you guys can watch that really show you how to run a book business. So be sure to go to starthumble.com. Also, if you sign up for starthumble.com, you'll get emails for free Zoom calls, some events that I throw, and also just the content that I post out there on a daily basis. So if you guys are interested, go to starthumble.com. That's my free step-by-step -step training on how to build a book business. The last thing I like to do is go ask for backroom access. So I'll ask, hey, could I look at the books in the back room? If they say no, I try and get them to bring some books out to me. So I'm gonna go and try to do that real quick. Excuse me, is the manager available? Is the manager here? I don't know. Okay. So, no manager here, it's getting weird. I'm in the back room, wasn't supposed to be back there. So I'm gonna look for someone out on the floor. Sometimes you just gotta do it though. Sometimes you just gotta walk back there and uh, act like you own the place. Yeah, baby, gold medal socks. Look at this. I'm not even wearing socks right now. I've been on the road for like two weeks. All my socks are dirty. I only have like one pair of socks. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good to be Avery. Jason. Is there any chance we could look at the books in the back? We, uh, we looked at the books on the floor and there's some that we're interested in purchasing, but we buy books in bulk. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of thrift stores will let us look in the back just through some stuff. I don't know if you have any Gaylords or pallets. Let me or... find out. Give me okay, one great, appreciate you. Generally, when, when you do this little pitch, what you want to do is have like actual items in a cart, preferably a lot of books. So I either like to ask for backroom access at the very beginning or um, at the end. And if it's at the end, I'm going to have kind of proof that I actually am purchasing a lot of inventory. 
but you don't want to be too pushy and it's just a numbers game like don't feel bad if they say no you might as well ask like what are you going to get like out of not asking you're not going to get anything out of not asking and when you do these thrifting days you want to have like 14 to 20 thrift stores just lined out bang them out one after another one after another and then you're going to get this confidence where if you get back room access at like two you can say well you know goodwill just let us look in the back room or you can you can use references like most thrift stores let us kind of look in the back and it's going to just build over time nothing okay i appreciate you looking into that yep all right guys so that's it for tackling the thrift store um you just want to you want to scan through the nonfiction fast if you want to squeeze profit out of the children's section you uh you look at the hardcover books and that's that's what i do and then then make a stack of non barcode books and make sure you, you look into all those because those are the books that nobody else no other resellers are looking at no other resellers are looking at um these non-barcode books in in like um i don't know the word for it like bulk quantities they might look at one here and there but if you have a stack of like 10 or 20 i guarantee you all those have not been looked looked through by resellers so i told you guys i would tell you a few more places to find profitable books the number one place in my opinion to like really jumpstart your business is booksalefinder.com this is a free website you can go to it look up all the book sales in your local area most of these are hosted by libraries I've made over, like I'm not joking, I've made over $1,000 profit in one day. The key here is to show up to the library early, help them set up, and oftentimes they'll actually let you look through the books if you help them set up. I mean, be upfront, tell them you're an Amazon seller, but that's a great way to find books. Another place is go on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and just look for used books. Um, you could find free books to pick up there. You could pay people for their books. You could find students with textbooks. Those are just a few places. If you guys want like more in-depth strategies, more advanced strategies, go to starthumble.com, 100% free course. I'm not trying to sell you another course within the course. It's it's all given away, 100% free value. Just uh, be sure to hit me up on social media afterwards when you have profit and let me know. I'm always happy to see you guys grow your businesses. And yeah, without further ado, peace out guys.